In a previous tutorial, we looked at for loops. In this tutorial, we're going to look at range and nested for loops. In the last video, we looked at loops. We looked at how they move through a list. So how it, it checks through one, then through this one, then through this one, etc. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at the the range. So first of all, let's just check out range. So if I type in range, just ignore these boxes here. And uh, let's say we put 20 in there. So it returns this range 0 to 20. Right? I can't really do much with that. Range, if I do list, range 20. Now it has returned 0 to 19. What if we wanted to start at a certain position? What if we didn't want this 0 here? We, we could start and notice that it only goes up to 19. It doesn't count because it, it starts counting at zero. It counts at zero, one, two, three, all the way up. So this is 20 numbers. The range here is 20. But it's not going to print out 20. So if we did list range and now remember up here it's got this it's got this 0 to 20 because this is the beginning and this is where it's going to end so we'll be started at this and we do 21 to compensate now it counts from 1 to 20 so there's something else that we can do with range as well so we can also go up in different increments. So let's go up in, in increments of two. So it starts there, it's going to miss out this one, and then um, print three. So now it goes up in these increments. And we can change that to, let's do it, five. And now it moves up. So it's going to print out the first one but it's not going to print out um, the rest. It's going to count five before it prints something else out. So we can go back to and now it prints the values out. So you can see that the range here has um, let me write this out. It's uh, range, and then what we have is a starting position, and then we have an ending position, or where it stops, and then we have a step or increment. So that's a, that's a good way way to see it there. Now, range, the reason why I'm talking about this is because we can use range in a list. We can we can take a list and say, right, okay, well, I don't want to print out all of this. What I want to do is use, is, is print out just every other one or something. So if I clear this and we run this piece of code here, Now this is just going to step through each one. It's just a regular, a regular for loop. It's just going to, to print out each item in this list. So if I, uh, if I change this for a moment. Now when I do it, this is just printing the list out 
in uh, a line. This end equals, and then I've I've given it here. Is this is this is basically telling it to print these things out on the same line, and separate them with this comma here. So um, that that's that's kind of handy to know but it's still not doing what we want to do we want to step through this and just print out certain ones every other one so how are we going to do that uh, we could um, say if we wanted to start at two we can then print it out but look look what's happened what happened there? It's gone zero, one, two, and it's printed out. It's printed out Lucy, but it, it, it stepped through every single letter. So we have a look at that. We step through. The list populates, we go through the first step, and step is now L, because what it's asking it to do is step through everything in list that is at index 2. That's why L is in there, and not Lucy. So that's not quite working how we want. <laughs> If we want to start at a certain point or move through in steps of two, say, then we can use the range in the for loop. The range has start, end, and increment, as I've already gone over. So if I just I just comment that out. And then down it. Get back to here, and we're going. We're going to have a look at, at, at this here and see what's going on. So if I, I comment this out, and now we we can see what's going on. We've got four step in range, and it's starting at um, zero, ending. At 20 and it's going up in steps of four and then it's going to print the step so if I run that now here it is 0 4 8 12 16 but remember it, it won't it won't print out this this last one here because it, it finishes when it gets to 20 it doesn't do anything else it just stops so if we look through, now if we look into step, it's got zero, and it's going to print zero. But now it goes back to the for loop, because it hasn't got to 20 yet. It's not equal to 20, so it's not going to, it's not going to stop. And then it moves through again. You see how it's stepping through, you know, it stepped through, and now the next one is four. And then it steps through again, that's going to be eight, and there it is, eight. Okay, so you get the idea there, that this is stepping through. We can use range to step through things. Well, now, what if we put the list into here? What would happen then? So, I'll comment this out. And now we're going to move down to this next bit. Right, so. Let's look at this. Now, what's going on here? Let's have a look. It's going to do the step like it does here. But instead of using these numbers, we're going to put the list in. 
But what we're doing is we're saying we're going to start at zero. We're going to continue for the length of the list. That's just whatever the length of the list is, is going to go in in this position. And we're going to go up in two. Then we're going to print this out. And um, we're going to um, print out the step. Let me, let me, let, let's just do it and we can see. So here it is. This is index zero. This item is Tony. And that, that is correct. The, the first item in the list is actually me. And then there's Fred the goldfish. Right? So <clears throat> it's gone through. So if, if we go if we go to the next one, two, two is Lucy, because it misses out Fred because Fred was at index one. Now, why have I done this bit here? This list, I have to put the step in. So let's step through this and see what's going on. The list gets populated. It's down here. Step has zero in. So if, uh, if I had to put step there, it would just have another zero. If I put list there, it's, it's going to print out the whole list. So I have to put the index number of the list that I want, I, of the list item that I want to print out. So there, there we go. It, it, it prints out this one here. Now what's in here now? That, that's zero. So if I step through that, this is now two. <laughs> the list stays the same. The length of the list is held in memory. If I step through this now, step is two and step is two and a list. So that's one, well, zero, one, two. So that should be Lucy that's printed out and it is. OK, so can you see how 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 straightforward it is once you understand how this range, the range stuff works? Now, if we move on to the the next one, if I just. OK, so let's move on to the next example, which is a nested loop. And what we're going to do is we're going to see what this does. So let's have a look at this. We've got two loops. We've got this outer loop here and we have this inner loop. This outer loop is going to run once and then this inner loop is going to take whatever is in, in this value and it's going to step through it. So what it's going to do is on the first run of the loop, it's going to find Tony and then on the, the inner loops, it's going to print out T O N Y before it move before the outer loop moves on to Fred. So if I press play or run, we should look at this and we can see what's happened. So if I just scroll up and see what's happened. The first loop action, which is to get the index value zero. So it steps through, it gets zero, and then it prints out what is in zero in here. So it takes this, goes to list, finds uh, the step, step goes into here, and it's going to print out, it's going to go through this loop and print out this. So this is the second loop, this is the second loop, this is the second loop, this is the second loop. Then it goes back to the first loop, the outer loop, and runs through the, its value and finds that the next, the next index number is one. And then it runs through 
the inner loop, the inner loop, the inner loop. So you can see that the inner loop is running um, more times than the outer loop. It runs, the outer loop runs, and then the inner loop runs a, a, like one, two, three, four times there. And it runs one, two, three, four times there. Um, but if we move down here, it, it, it's like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times there. You see how this is going to complete its action before this one moves on to the next loop. Now, if I uh, if I just get rid of this, we can also make it go in reverse. So if I do this, what's going to happen is it's going to run through the list, but it's going to go through it in reverse. Hopefully. I know what I've done. Put that comma in there. Now, it's run through it in reverse. So, it started at index 8. Now, that's what this minus 1 is about. Because the length of this list is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right? But it starts at 0. So it'd be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if I put, if I didn't put that minus 1 in there and say, hey, we're starting at the end, we're, we're starting at the length of this, this list, the end of it, basically, and we're not going to finish until we get to zero, and we're going to move down one each time. It, it, would, it would have some problems, because it would be trying to start at nine, when index nine doesn't actually exist. That's for loops and range. So if we just go over this again, we just summarize this, the for loops will iterate through these values. You can have nested for loops, like the one we just saw, which went through, picked out uh, an element, uh, an item in an index, and then went through every single letter with the inner loop. With range, state where do you start, where you want it to finish, and whether you want it to increment up or decrement down, and state what that, that step is going to be. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and try out one of my other videos.